So one of the things me and my other Bond friends like to talk about every now and then is the kind of age-old question of what's going to be the next Bond movie? With Daniel ending, the movies are in need of a new lead actor, director, and complete story. So it makes sense that Bond fans would be speculating about it all the time. Everyone has their own personal preferences. A lot of people want Bond to return to the old sort of Sean Connery, Roger Moore-esque Bond gets a mission, goes on the mission and does his thing. Some other people love the Daniel Craig style where it's an overarching story with a bit more character depth and you can't really please everyone. Michael G. Wilson and Barbara Broccoli have been quite coy about telling anyone anything new about Bond and they don't really know who's going to be the new actor even though I reckon they probably have got someone for a while. But we know nothing and we're not going to know nothing for the foreseeable future Un unless this, this gets announced in the next week then I'm sorry. But that doesn't mean we can't have an idea of what's going to be in the next James Bond movie. One of the things that's taking over the world at the moment is artificial intelligence, and if iRobot's anything to go by, we're all doomed. Now with software like ChatGPT and imaging software like Midjourney, you can actually make it a reality of what you want the world to look like. So I thought I'd ask ChatGPT to write me the next James Bond movie. So basically, what we're going to do is we're going to go into ChatGPT, copy and paste in all the tropes I have written down, and see what it comes out with. So I'm looking forward to seeing what comes up. So the pre-title sequence, James Bond's played by Michael B. Jordan, our first American James Bond. So James Bond, played by Michael B. Jordan, is in pursuit of a high-profile criminal on a speeding train, very reminiscent of Skyfall. Uh, an action-packed sequence involves hand-to-hand -hand combat, gunplay, and a thrilling escape. The title song is performed by Adele. Again, look, Shirley Bassey came back multiple times. Why can't we get Adele back? Uh, the song is called Shadows of the Night. Sounds very Bondian indeed. Sets the tone for the film, capturing the intensity and intriguing, intrigue of Bond's mission. So what I get there is, I think, ChatGPT wants Bond to continue on with the ballads. I don't think we're getting any rock music in this. M, played by Tilda Swinton of all people, explains the mission to Bond, briefing him on a mysterious organisation planning to unleash a deadly virus on major cities worldwide. Bond is tasked to track down the organisation's leader and stop the impending catastrophe. So again, it's it's going on very standard Bond stuff here. Flirting with Money Penny. Bond Michael G. B. Jordan uh, engages in playful banter, flirtation with Money Penny, played by Anna de Armas. So she's back. This time it's Money Penny. We have a foreign Money Penny. Unless she can do a really convincing British accent, but who knows? Well, we did have a foreign Money Penny. We did have um, Lois Maxwell, who's Canadian. So, you know, nothing to say. Money Penny can't be from another place. Gadgets from Q. Bond visits Q, played by Riz Ahmed. I think that would be very good casting for Q. So I think ChatGBT is onto something there. Uh, in a high-tech workshop where he receives cutting-edge gadgets, including a modified Aston Martin with advanced weaponry and surveillance capabilities. So maybe is that surveillance capability? Is it going to go invisible like... Uh, die another day? Who knows? Bond in investigates the main villain, Nikolai Volkov. Uh, okay, so this is after the fact. And I just realised, uh, the big wrestling fan I am, didn't cop that the name of the villain's Nikolai Volkov. A famous wrestler back in the 70s and 80s. And I just didn't notice. Can't believe it. Uh, yeah, so that that's a random connection. Apparently Nikolai Volkov is now a Bond villain. Just for frame of reference, this is what he looks like. The more you know. Played by Mads Mikkelsen. Mads is back. Um, we could... We we might change some stuff later, but so far Mads is back. Uh, a brilliant and enigmatic mastermind with a disfigured face. Classic Bond. Bond tracks him to a luxurious casino in Monte Carlo, where they meet in a non-confrontational manner engaging in cryptic words again it's all just playing to the brief i have up there if you want to pause and read it uh but yeah it's just it's just taking the brief and going fairly basic with it Falkoff plans on unleashing a genetically modified virus that can target specific dna profiles intending to sell it to the highest bidder very no time to die 
that, it, that is basically no time to die. His ultimate goal, to destabilize governments and reshape the world according to his vision. That's just Safin's plan for him, no time to die. The movie takes place in London, Tokyo, Cape Town, South Africa, and Rio de Janeiro. That's really good. I really like that. I think having Bond go down to like Cape Town and South Africa would be really cool. Have Bond going back to Tokyo, I'd be well up for. And Rio de Janeiro in Brazil, all wonderful locations. So I think that, you know, that, that all checks out for me. Bond engages in a high-speed car chase through the streets of Tokyo, driving an Aston Martin DBS Super Lagia, Super Lagada. I'll uh, put a picture up screen. Evading Volkov's henchmen and showcasing Bond's exceptional driving skills. He's got exceptional driving skills, people. Uh, Volkov's henchman, Ivan Petrov. Yeah, yeah, turns out he's also a real person. Played by Tom Hardy. So Tom Hardy's not going to be villain. He's not even going to play James Bond. He's the henchman in this. Which I think actually kind of would work for Tom Hardy. He, like, like Bane in The Dark Knight Rises, he's quite an imposing figure. You know, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, a physically imposing but ruthless assassin serves as a right-hand man. Volkov's lair is hidden deep within an abandoned volcanic island. We're going back to volcano bases, people. This is what you love to see. Uh, where he conducts his sinister operations. His disfigurement is as a result of a past encounter with Bond. Oh, so we get a bit of um, Christoph Waltz's Blofeld in there. So they have history. And it's not in this movie, so... Volkov does have past history with Bond, which I really like. Sophia Kurtz, played by Alicia Vikander, I think she'd be a great Bond girl, uh, is the main Bond girl, an intelligent and resourceful scientist who aids Bond on his mission. She survives him alongside until the end. You know, your classic Bond girl stuff. Isabella Serrano, played by Penelope Cruz. Don't know how we feel about that, but, you know, she, she fulfills the kind of exotic briefer usually a female female character she is an ally and former agent who assists bond but is tragically killed early on moting but motivating bond to seek vengeance don't know how much vengeance he'll be seeking if she's only there for a few minutes but you know bond needs a motive somehow and then you got natasha inova played by gal gadot a seductive femme fatale who initially worked for volkov but switches sides and is ultimately killed by bond that's very interesting wonder why bond will be Switch, why, why Bond would kill her if she's switching sides but maybe there's some shady business going on in there who knows confrontation with the villain Bond infiltrates Volkov's lair engaging in a fierce battle with Petrov whom he fights and kills in a climactic showdown very standard so Volkov captures Bond revealing his grand plan and gloating about his impending victory he explains his vision for New World Order underestimating Bond's resourcefulness because we know how resourcefulness he is. Bond escapes, leaving to a dramatic final battle with Volkov. Bond outwits and outmatches the villain, ultimately killing him follow and foiling his grand plot. The movie ends with Bond kissing Sophia Cruz, the main Bond girl, as they celebrate their victory. Note, this is a fictional movie concept based on the provided requirements. So there you go. If AI was to write a James Bond movie, this is what we get. And it's called Shadow Protocol. Very interesting. I don't know how far we can look into, essentially, AI playing a big part in Bond. I know studios are helping use it to come up with ideas and write scripts, but I think it will be a long while before we have AI play a part in the creation of a Bond movie. Um, but you never know. could be sooner rather than later. As for the the film we've got, it's... It seems very basic and it goes through a lot of the plot points that have already been there. Interesting things I want to point out here. Michael B. Jordan as Bond. Michael B. Jordan's a fantastic actor and I think he like he played great Bond. Don't know how his British accent is, but he's a phenomenal actor. Shadows of the Night for a film called Shadow Protocol. Shadow Protocol sounds very good. Sounds like a Metal Gear Solid game, but you know, I think it's probably a decent title. I think Tilda Swinton, very good idea for M. I think she could hold the kind of the authority needed for for M. Anna de Armas as Money Penny. I don't know, maybe. Don't think she'd come back though. I think Riz Ahmed for Q. That makes a lot of sense. That could be very good. Then you go like Mads Mikkelsen coming back. You can tell the AI has because it's Bond. It'll just have a lot of people come back to do previous things so Mads Mikkelsen as a villain again you know Adele doing the theme song a lot of kind of standard stuff um the plot is just completely out of 
No Time to Die with the virus. Though I think having like mixing up what seems like the Daniel Craig tenure where it has the casino in Monte Carlo and it has the DNA profile thing with No Time to Die. Yeah, seems seems very kind of... I can see this is a Daniel Bond movie. It's like, it's like a weird amalgamation of everything we've seen before. Anything else? I like the different locations. The movie takes place in, I think, I'd love to see a Moonraker-esque Bond movie where he literally just goes around all the world. So you have Tokyo, Rio, London, Cape Town. Like, he kind of ticks off nearly every single box. Car Chase, uh, and then Mar- Aston Martin DBS Super Ligera. Like, I think you know, Bond and Aston Martin is perfect, if you ask me. Tom Hardy as, uh, as the henchman is an interesting choice because I think a lot of people would peg him to be the next Bond. But, yeah, I think he'd probably actually be a better henchman. Or villain. I think he could do both. But that's very interesting. Alicia Vikander, I think, is a great actress. I think she could make a very good Bond girl. Penelope Cruz? Sure, she could be. She could be in the next Bond movie. But I say that's probably going to be the furthest. Or maybe Gal Gadot. I think Gal Gadot's gone probably a bit too big to be, you know, in Bond if she wasn't going to be the main villain. But I think she'd probably make a, a fine femme fatale. Um, her acting ability is debatable. Uh, whoever you ask, but I think she's fine. And then has just the standard fights in the villain's lair, which is in a volcano. So we're going back to You Only Live Twice territory here. And, you know, quite happy with that. So there you go. I think it's an interesting idea, but I, I don't think Purvis and Wade have anything to be worried about for the immediate future. Yeah, I think I think we're in safe hands for a while. If you enjoyed the video, please like, comment, subscribe. You know what to do. Look, you know yourself. I'm not going to I'm not going to get on to you about it, like, you know? This is a new channel, and I'm going to try my best to kind of make it work. I have a lot of content planned that I want to do, a lot of it involving James Bond. You'll be glad to hear. Have a good day, folks. Bye.